I want a jungle, dense foliage with waterfalls and lakes, big enough to lose a whole resort hotel in it, like an ancient city lost in a jungle. These were the words of a man named Sol Kersner, dynamo, fantasizer extraordinaire, and chief executive of Sun International Hotels. It was only when Mr. Kersner pointed into an arid valley next to Sun City on the edge of the Kalahari Desert and spoke again that he added the most daunting dimensions to his instructions. And I want it here, he said. His words set in motion the development of a $300 million resort and one of the largest landscaping and gardening projects on earth, the gardens of the lost city. Many would say that such a request is typical of Sol Kersner, a man who does not understand the word, can't. Nor does Patrick Watson, a renowned landscape designer who is accustomed to Mr. Kersner's visions and who has translated them into working designs several times before. The jungle paradise envisaged by Kersner and Watson would cover more than 60 acres and there was the creation and preparation of a six million dollar championship golf course to consider. And if this was not enough, it would all have to be ready in just two years. Designing a project as complex as this would be futile without being able to rely upon a landscaping contractor who instead of being overawed by the logistics would be inspired by them. Someone who could first do the job and then maintain the result thereafter. And so it was that Sol Kersner and Patrick Watson entrusted the job to Dave Kirkby. Dave and his partner Jimmy Power were instant lawn farmers who took less than 15 years to build their fledgling business into South Africa's premier landscaping enterprise, Top Turf. Over the years, their landscaping talents transformed numerous golf courses, office parks, whole mining towns, sports stadiums, embassies and resorts. Several of those resorts belong to Sun International, arguably the most demanding customer in the business. Having become adept at anticipating trends, Top Turf soon began setting them. The gardens and jungles surrounding the existing hotels at Sun City were the first of their kind in Southern Africa and inspired bigger things. In fact, Top Turf was prepared in advance for their biggest project to date, the Lost City. Ready and waiting in Top Turf's nurseries around South Africa were hundreds of thousands of indigenous and exotic plants, most of them nurtured from seed and most of them never cultivated before. But the sheer size and complexity of the project still warranted a worldwide search for plants. And they came from Zimbabwe, Mozambique and Madagascar, from the Seychelles, Mauritius, the Comores, from Saudi Arabia, Australia and the Philippines, and from the USA, Mexico, Panama and Ecuador. Like a military exercise, Top Turf moved in major equipment. Computer programs were specially written to cope with the myriad intricacies of the project. Offices and living quarters were erected. 440 Top Turf personnel would be required on site. Construction of the fantasy landscape began in earnest. Hundreds of tons of earth and rock were moved and rearranged. Existing trees and shrubs were moved to an on-site tree farm to be replanted later. From far and wide, large trees arrived for planting. Among them, every one of the species of wild fig occurring in Southern Africa. Tall and elegant palms from the Indian Ocean coastline. And from the arid north, giant 300-year-old baobabs. Some of them weighing as much as 40 tons, saved from the bulldozers of road builders. Also underway was a complex planting program for nearly one million plants. Top turf experts had also designed a complicated yet brilliant irrigation system to cope with an unprecedented mix of plants. Some requiring water three times a day, others only once a month. Some favoring groundwater, others needing it from above. 
summer rainfall here and winter rainfall there. The jungle was created in subdivisions. From its tropical center, ebony, fluted milkwood, red beech and African flame would gradually merge into progressively drier areas as the gardens moved towards the golf course and the surrounding African bush. The design called for a rainforest with 40 foot high trees providing a canopy over secondary trees half that height and a rich carpet of ground plants. This would merge into mist forest and then to wetland The jungle would be threaded with pathways for the adventurous and recreation areas would be punctuated by lawns meticulously prepared to the same standards as championship greens. The golf course was taking shape too, forming its own liquid beauty of smooth turf, pools and palms against a backdrop of the African bush. Included for good measure in the style of the lost city were pools of natural habitat for crocodiles. Inside the Lost City's centerpiece, the Palace Hotel, top turf matched the hotel's dramatic opulence with thousands of indoor plants, including palms and orchids. When it was finished, the gardens of the Lost City boasted 3,000 species, double the number found in the Kruger National Park. For years to come, especially rare species of flora saved from certain extinction will thrive in the botanical treasure house created at the Lost City. With the precise attention to detail which distinguishes this designer jungle, top turf ornithologists established a large variety of indigenous birds, as this once arid valley was undergoing its ecological metamorphosis. Milima. It's complete, but the landscaping contractor will not be leaving. Top Turf has a team of professionals permanently stationed here to care for their extraordinary creation well into the future. By his nature, man spends a lot of time devising bridges between imagination and reality. At the Lost City, like the other locations before it, the wizards of Top Turf built the bridges and turned fantasy into fact. And they'll do it again. Salam, yeah. Twipe and die.